it was a, it was a not, it was a non-recognize. It's this weird sort of, I still don't know, and I was like, yeah. She's like, who do you play? I play Richard, uh, the guy's like friends with uh, Scott Foley, Noel. <laughs> I've had a few of those with you and Rich, funny enough, like walking through the you know, like convention uh, lobby of sorts, and I'll be like trailing back, and you guys will be like 20 feet up, and I'll be like walking by, and somebody will come up next to me and be like, oh, 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 it's Robin Rich. <laughs> And I, I literally, like, I, I look at them deeply, but they don't recognize me, like... Oh. And then they're like, do you have a marker? And I'm like, you know what? Gold, silver, black. <laughs> oh my god, you're so prepared. I'm like... Oh. And I quickly walked on. I thought about that yesterday, because uh, uh, Jeff and I were uh, stranded together in the airport. Jeff Priest and I, and so we... Um, we did a post that we took a picture of each other. I was like, uh, you know, at least I'm stranded with Jeffrey Paris at Jeffrey Paris. And I was like, hashtag God and Osmodeus. Right? Right. And I saw one of the first comments I, I saw was, uh, oh, bad luck for Rob and Rob's friend. It's not like Jeffrey Paris, man. What was that for? It keeps us human, man. I love you guys just building something. Oh, yeah, people are straight now. People can't hand me a phone to take a picture of them and Rich. Like, that's yeah. happening. Like, like, you know? like, that's funny enough, this happened with me and Rich several times too, where they're like, oh, would you? And I'm like, I sure will. I'm making a great frame and everything. <laughs> I, like, I actually, I swear one time a woman was like, oh my god, Rich, I love you so much. Would you take a picture? I was like, sure, I took a picture. And she's like, thanks, Chuck. <laughs> so she liked that thing. She's off the that. He wasn't there with a chuckle and walk. I'm good. I'm good today. <laughs> yes. Hello. My question is actually for you, Rob. Uh, so we saw Chuck go from the hermetic book writer and then the kind of sweet, goofy, nonchalant god. Uh, from the beginning, when you kind of started thinking that you were a god, did you know you were going to end up being an ass? <laughs> no. I did not see that coming. <laughs> but I mean, this whole character journey has been like that, right? I thought the first episode, I thought it was just one one episode and done, um, just prophet guy, and then it turns out I came back, and then at the end of season five is when I found out I was God. But then Eric Kirkie was like, "You're probably not coming back because we can't really have God as like a, a guest star all the time, you know?" Uh, okay, that's okay. And then season ten, they brought me back as sort of like a wink. Like, uh, sort of, hey, it's me, still checking you out, not bad, that whole thing. <laughs> and then season 11 had that whole arc with Omar, and like, that was awesome. It's like you know, the, the, some of my favorite episodes I've ever done in television. And then I thought that was kind of over, and then I came back again, and I was a real ass. <laughs> the whole time it's been a surprise for me, but um, it's, it, it's super fun to play. Every, every version of Chuck has been fun for me, and this, this current uh, version is very interesting. Um, I didn't see it coming, but I think it's kind of genius what they're doing. And I think this season is, is just going to be pretty epic. So I'm excited for you to see what we've done so far and what, what's to come. And I don't even know what's to come, but I'm excited to see it. So. Thank you. Yeah. You there. Hi. Hi. It's good to see you guys. It's good, good to see you. Um, lady. Here. Show what your audition process was like, was like, or what sort of brought him to Supernatural and what, what that kind of journey was like to getting on the show and, and like immediately being on the show and what those reactions were. Uh, well, I have actually, it's kind of a funny story, and uh, this deals with Robert Ulrich, who I know originally cast, I don't know if he still does or is at his office or whatever. Robert Ulrich, great casting director. Um, right at the Valley in Los Angeles, and I remember getting the audition, not knowing what Supernatural was. Sorry. <laughs> what season? This was season four. Oh, four. Season four. Season four, so probably as the end of season three was airing, I was auditioning. Hadn't, didn't know what it was, watched a few episodes, saw that I was supposed to be this Jeffrey, this JDM guy. At the time, I knew him, but I didn't know him from Supernatural, so I 
you know, whenever I looked up some stuff, saw some videos, I was like, all right, I'm good. I take my headshot, I walk in the office, and uh, Robert's in a small, you know, office at the time. There's just this desk, and he's sitting behind, and the door's like over here, and I walk in, and he's got, like, I see it's my resume on the back, so I know he's looking at my headshot. He's holding it in front of his face. I can't see him, so, hey, how are you? I'm Matt. And he literally goes with the headshot, like drops it, just so his eyes come up. And he goes, wow, you really do look just like me. I hope you're all right. I hope you're good. Uh, and he like flipped it over and looked at the resume, and then like put it down. He's like, all right, go ahead. And I was like, shit, I hope I'm good too. And I read it one time, and then the next, the callback was for Kripke. It was just Kripke and Ulrich. And it was on Warner Brothers lot, like where they have like those houses, you know. And that was it. I, I went in there. and Kripke actually wrote um, some of Boogeyman Two, which was the first movie I ever did. So I guess I'm semi familiar, somewhat, you know, uh, with who I was. And uh, yeah, I went in and I don't know, no direction, just kind of let me do it. Who directed that episode? Your first episode? I want to say like Steve Boyum. Somebody that is on just doing something else. Like yeah. a big Steve Boyan was a ex stuntman turned big action director. Of he TV. might have directed one of mine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's been. A, I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know if he hasn't been around. I haven't been around for the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my first thing. It was basically like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, you fit the look. Please don't suck. Go. <laughs> That. Here I am, a hundred years later, yeah. and seven thousand conventions later, yeah. and Rob and I are going to be on walkers momentarily. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what about you, Casting, You remember? Um, uh, it's funny you say like I, have, I, I always have the opposite. Like, well, you don't look like what we were thinking. <laughs> we'll see if you can act. <laughs> that, that, honestly, that was I was I prided myself in like changing their mind. Right. But then well, you really put me in a box, really. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to change their mind. But yeah, I know you had this in mind. Wait till you see this. Yeah. <laughs> I think it wasn't supposed to dance, but uh, alright. Um, but I can. But I can. And also hop on foot. There was casting director and one of the producers in the room, and I don't know who it was. It was one of the writer producers. I didn't know anybody at that time. I, didn't, I knew the show was on, I never watched an episode. I had to go back and watch episodes before I went in because my character talked about some of the former episodes because I referenced things like bugs and things like that. Apologize for certain episodes. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I went in and, I, and that was my audition. Was went on tape and, and I was and I um, I'm auditioning for them and I just I really just I really jived with what that character was and and I, I you know and that's what you do when you really get a character and you really feel like oh I know this guy. Um, you, you know, you, you give it your best, and then you hope that they're thinking the same thing with who that guy is. Um, but yeah, I think I was kind of, you know, I had the beard and was uh, definitely went for the whole, like, I've been drinking all day and I haven't seen the light in a while. And, um, but I hadn't, not, not that day. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, and then you just, like I said, then I leave, like, okay, I felt like that went well, but who knows what they're thinking, and then sure enough, uh, the next day or so, I got a call saying that I'd been cast, and that was it. And then. Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit, and then here we go, and then here we are, 10, 12, 13 years later. Maybe the longest, other than the boys and Misha, but the longest, most drastic character arc of any character <laughs> in the show, arguably, is to get to where you are now. Yeah, yeah, like, it's crazy. This, yeah. This guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy. Right? Yeah, yeah. To be that, yeah. The, I mean, how awesome, like, what more could you ever ask for, uh, other than being a series regular, like, that's pretty great that you not only play God and reinvented the version of God for our family here, and, and who knows, Kripke himself, you know? Yeah. And now you're here, it's you know, gonna end it all. So. Truly, it's been... Couldn't get us a 16, God? Scripts. Um, they I, do because you think of the scripts. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, it has been an amazing journey, and like what you know, what a gift, and and, and I feel honored and uh, every day to be a part of it, to still be a part of it. Um, and you know, I, I went through the same thing that I think you guys go through when you as you when you watch it. Like when I first got the script of season fourteen, I was like, oh shit, I, I don't I don't like seeing Chuck like that, but like. That's what you're given, and 
and then now I'm kind of doing it, it makes complete sense to me. Um, and it's just fun, it's just fun, fun to be part of, so. It's always fun playing bad and mean. Like, my, right. my Kings of Comic character is, totally. like, the most fun I could ever have back. Totally. How can I elevate my assholeness in this scene <laughs> over here? Exactly. Not that God's really assholey in that way, but a little different way. Yeah. Apocalyptic sort of way. Yeah, I mean, I think what's evil about what's happening right now is just that he, he is, um, Using the boys almost like, I mean, they're it's like his favorite show, and but they're, to him they're almost like pawns in the master game that he's got going on, and they're like, we're real people, and you're playing with our life. I, I've been liking it, what's going on with Chuck, with what happens between the writers of the show and us actors on the show. They love all of us, dearly, we talked about this, but they will, they change their mind about certain directions, so you think you're going to be, you know, for example, if you get pinned for shows, they go, hey, we're going to need you for episode four or whatever. Okay, so they pin you, but they don't actually book you on contract until they're absolutely certain that no change has been made to the script. So a lot of times you get pinned, and then they rewrite it, and they're like, ooh, they've rewritten your character out, but not because they don't like you, they just put it a different way with their perception of what that script is. So you'll get the call like, hey, you're not pinned anymore. And you're gutted. You're like, oh, man. <laughs> Really? I guess I was in it, and I found out. It's not personal at all. But they're just writers. They're creative. Like, oh, and Rob will be doing the. No, no, not Rob. Um, uh, who else? We can get Jim Beaver, and we'll do. You know what I mean? But we're all real people, so we're really like, well, this is. And I, I feel like that's kind of what's happening to me. That's the allegory of, of Chuck going like, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then you know he's going, what the end, Chuck? And, and then, so. I, I think it like strikes such an emotional level with us because we are, we essentially, all of us guest stars from the show have, we play the lottery, the supernatural lottery, but the odds are like 1 in 40 to come back. And we're like, ha ha, yeah, 1 in 40 is great. How come I never win? I never win. Yeah. <laughs> they don't pick my number. The odds are whatever, every opposite of only two. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're those two. You know, it hasn't Misha died like six times? Yes. Everybody's, everybody's dying and living. Who knows what's going on? You should know. I should. That's <laughs> <laughs> me. Hi. Um, my question was, do people ever like talk to you like, via internet or real life and like criticize you for how you portray God on the show based on all religion? You know, I haven't gotten a lot of that. It, uh, not that I've seen, but honestly, I do not pour over comments for that reason, because I, A, I'm, I'm just kind of scared of confrontation, but also, <laughs> I don't, it's always nice to see compliments, um, but even the compliment, it just makes me, something makes me a little uncomfortable, I don't know, this is what I love, I love interacting with real people and talking, you know, in reality with people about stuff, uh, but stuff on the internet can sometimes be misconstrued, you don't know what people meant, um, and so I try not to get too far in because I'm the kind of person that I'm pretty sensitive and I take things to heart. And so one person will say one thing and they may not even meant it that way, but I'm like, oh no, I don't know what that was supposed to be. You know, so that being said, I've never seen anything that's like, you're not God. My God is this. And you know, I've never found anything religious. It just just the, the hardest thing I've gotten recently is just like, you're an ass. But it's like, oh, really, not something Rob Benedict got a lot of. Um, but now I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I get it. I know what people are talking about. And hopefully they know that I, I per, I'm a person and that I'm not an ass. But I, I, I'm portraying someone who can be perceived as an asshole. But um, anyway, so yeah, no, I've never gotten anything like that. I've had like, I've had like priests or nuns at conventions who are like, hey, I'm a nun and what, what up? <laughs> but no, <laughs> I'm hoping it's been kind of fun. It's just sort of fun. It's such an honor. It's such an honor to play that big of a concept, you know. I've never, never had any uh, uh, opportunity like this as an actor, so it's been a, it's been a great, it's been a great, what a thrill, you know. So I'm like, hey, oh by the way, that part you were that you were playing, you're actually now this. I'm like, huh, what? It's like we're in the lottery, you know. Woo um, but, but yeah, no, I don't want the responsibility in your life. So, uh, that's what I'm If you ever meet a nun. You should be like, hey, what up? I'm what God. Up? Yeah. And you see what they say. Totally. Yeah. I do God. I play God. I'm like, God. What up? See, they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. 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 Hi.
It's sad, me. Um, I, I, when you, when I meet people in real life, they like they don't know the show. Like, what's your character? Who do you play? I'm like, I'm, 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 and all your friends, we go, like when I'm meeting new friends, I'm like, oh, what's up? Yeah, my, uh, my buddy Rob's coming over. He plays God on television. <laughs> so, uh, he's a, a big, awesome deal, and he's my friend. He plays God. Did I say that? God? He's, he's God, the G-O-D, all capitals. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I get bashful about it. Here he is, God! <laughs> right in, tells a good joke. God's funny. I didn't say, I didn't say G damn. I was like, God damn. It was good. It sounded like I wouldn't do it right in front of him. Yeah, I heard it. Next question. Matt, I wanted to say how fun karaoke was last night. It was really good. Karaoke would like to say how fun you were last night. Thank you for partying with us. I wanted to ask Rob a question, so I wanted to tell you how awesome you were before I ask Rob questions, okay? Future note. <laughs> Just leave it at karaoke, was awesome. <laughs> but go ahead. Rob, since I can't uh, accept a world where Chuck is an asshole, uh, I have a theory that Chuck is just really, really scared. Really, yeah. really terrified. And I know you can't tell us what is to come, but can you tell us anything about when last season you had to play Chuck in the graveyard? Was fear, was fear in your mind when you were playing Chuck? Yes. Yeah, I think that there's a, a power that Jack has that is scary for Chuck. Um, even Chuck, because uh, Jack is, you know, because of who Jack's father is, there's a lot going on there. And I think that's scary. Um, so yes, that is part of it. I wish I could say more, um, that hopefully this season will explain for us, but, um, yeah, definitely that's part of it. Um, he's been knocked off his game a little bit, and I think that's where he gets into his sort of more serious mode. Um, you know, he's sort of being a strict father right now. Um, and uh, is the way that I am feeling. I know other people might put a different word on it, but um, strict father is what I'm going with. <laughs> Old testimony, um, all smiting and whatnot. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely fear a big part of it. Um, I also want to say that there's, we, we always love it with people because when we're up here with Rich, there's a lot of times people like, Matt, Rob, love you guys so much. You guys are just so awesome. But my question's for Rich. Um, you know, we, you know, I, my favorite was one time this girl in like Minneapolis or something was like, Rob, I'm Lisa, I'm your brother's friend. I'm like, oh my god, yes, it's Omel Max. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. My question's for Matt. Um, <laughs> Or the time my mom saw the first time saw a Rich Rob Matt panel, and afterwards, I was like, "Mom, you just saw the first panel. Like, what'd you think?" She's like, "Oh, I just saw it. It was just lovely." But my question's for Matt. <laughs> so, like a general hospital question. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, it just got done to me." My mom. I love it. I love it. I hold those moments high in my heart. <laughs> but yeah, you're very perceptive. That that fear is is definitely a, a weird thing that he's dealing with that he has not dealt with. Or not on this level. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for karaoke statement. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I feel bad after what you just said, but my question's actually for Rob, too. Matt, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's about the current season, and I kind of have to. Okay. So, Rob, with Chuck, what sets him more? Sam actually shooting him, or Amara leaving him behind? Oh. <laughs> Oh man, you mentioned the name or... oh. um, I don't think the fact that Sam shot him um, is, is uh, th that's not something that, that could be something that he knew would happen. Uh, I think he's a little bit thrown by how much it's affected him. How much that wound or whatever's going on there that they've got somehow, something going on that that's, that that's affected him. And the Amara thing is devastating. He goes to her to try to help pull him out of this, and he doesn't like being in that position. Uh, he's got to ask for something, and that's what he's trying to do in those scenes in that episode. And she disses him, and that is hurtful. And so, <laughs> uh, you don't want to make Chuck even more mad. So, uh, yeah, so that's where we're at right now, huh? 
So yeah. So yeah, I say right now that that's that was maybe that really teed him off a bit. So um, yeah, he's not happy. Thank you for that. Thanks. He's seen better days. So it wasn't on this week, it'll be on next week, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what Jensen directed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Four? Four. 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 Yeah. Hello. Hi, my question is for Matt. Hey. <laughs> Should be on Supernatural, and what Supernatural actor should be on GH, and what would they play? Here's a here's a quick bit of factual information you may or may not know. So there is a character um, that's escaping me. His name. There's this guy Dom Dominic uh, Zam Zamborga. Dante. Oh. Dante, who played in season one of Supernatural. Yeah. He, he was in, uh, I just watched it, it was like episode between 18 and 22, it's a great vampire episode of the first uh, first season, and he did a good job, and he plays yeah. it, so he already crossed over and was on Supernatural. If there was another guy, who? Patrick. Oh yeah, James Patrick Stewart, we all know, his bed's been on, but if there was an actor that's on GH, I would like to see um, my longtime love interest and co-star of the show, Maura West, uh, I don't know if you guys know her, she plays, she plays Ava Jerome, and she's an over-the-top badass villainess on the show, and she would be a tremendous guest star character on Supernatural, she just was just badass female guest star, like she just has it in her, I, you know, she's been on the show for a long time, I don't know if she's looking uh, for other kids, but she's great at it. I agree. And Sonny, obviously Maurice Menard would be great, he'd be great for Rob to play off of, like as like some big bad of sorts that Rob deals with in his very, because he only talks like, he's like, so bad. He's been out for a while. Yeah, he's been out for a while. And Maurice can get away with this wonderful thing that he does. He's a tremendous actor. The guy's won 100 Emmys and she's gonna win 100 more, but he can take those pauses that like where another actor may forget a line and kind of is like, ah shit, what is it? Can I go again? Where he'll just stay in it. So it's so brutally uncomfortable. Until the word just comes Until up. something happens in one of our faces and the word comes up and he'll just be like, huh. Uh, school. School. School is where it all began for me when I finished school. I went and I went and got a snack after school, you know what? Was the Oreo. Dude, or like, he has this like subtle acting that you're like, short call cut, and we go learn the lines, or are you having a moment, and I'm just not on your level, and it's always that, it's always the, the latter of the two. So, is, do people ever improvise when they just go up on the line? And they, like, yeah, yeah, you know, the veterans are, are allowed a little bit more freedom with that type of stuff. Um, I remember you telling me that people get a little bit, like, they really need you to know the lines. Yeah, I mean, you have one one blocking and, and one, you know, essentially a, a rehearsal that is supposed to be the take, almost. So you do the scene three times, or you come in in the morning, like, you're in your gym clothes, and you got the papers, and you're like, so Griffin steps over here, and he says, blah, 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 and as soon as he's done with that, he's got to walk to this thing, but look once, and then do it again. <laughs> and this is, like, how the rehearsal goes. The director kind of walks you through that. He's already... We're shooting five cameras at once, so one kind of mastery crane shot, and two medium overs, and then two close-up overs, and you know, like, all right, and then Griffin just, just had enough, and he's dealing with it, and then he steps over here. All right, let's rehearse, and then we're going, and then, then all of a sudden you're like, all right, um, uh, I don't really remember my lines, but I walk over here, and, and this is how it goes, like, this is how I will say it when, when, when you do it, and I'm like, right, yes, and this is when I did the thing. All right, I, I guess we're ready. Go ahead. And then like, four, three, and you're like, shit. I gotta look at the lines. Can I go again? That's me. That's me. Yeah, and, and, and they'll give you that, that those type of things. But generally, it's it's a very very loose rehearsal, not a supernatural rehearsal uh -huh. where it's let's clear the crew, let's do the guys, bring the crew in. You know, it's not that. It's crew's there. I'm trying to figure out why I'm here picking up the glass and drinking it, how that works with the line, right. and why I go over here and make it not look, you know, phoned in and yeah. all that stuff. So it's, it moves fast, you need to know your dialogue, and then you need to uh, try to make sense of this is the situation in minimal time, which is just crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's, I love this job. Every experience that I get is a lucky experience, but 
The soap opera world doesn't quite give me enough all the time of each moment. There's times where two actors sit down, the challenging six, seven, five pages, whatever it is, look in each other's eyes, and all of a sudden, three sentences in, they are not knowing what's happening because they're just talking to each other, and that's what you yearn for as an actor, a connection like that. Like I look at you, talking to you, approaching you, I'm not thinking about what my hands doing or my face or any of that. Those are the moments, and you just don't really get those all the time in soaps because the, the pacing moves so fast. We do 130 pages a day on a soap, Supernatural does seven. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Um, that's why it was like, you know, and they went in, all those lines, I mean, we memorize our lines, but we memorize about two pages at a time, you know. Um, what actor from Supernatural would you want to be on GH? Oh, I'd love to see Jensen reprise some uh, okay. soap so <laughs> I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Jensen's handsome on Supernatural. But <laughs> they would, they would hang him up. He would look like a porcelain so. doll. <laughs> Could you just imagine each little highlight twinkling? Every, every millimeter of his lips shiny and glowing, and me just off camera going. <laughs> it would be funny to do a, a soap uh, a soap day with Jensen though. He was he was apparently really good at it and and thrived in that atmosphere. No no wonder. I mean he's been great since the pilot episode, which I just I just watched, and I was like. Damn, this boy's been good for a long time. <laughs> yeah. For a long time, Jensen's been playing a smart ass and doing it funny. Like, unbelievable. You know, he and I went out for Halloween last weekend. Yes. Uh, Trish had a party. So and we did once, once Upon a Time in America. Once Upon a Time in America. Hollywood! I'm sorry. Once Upon a Time in <laughs> Hollywood. And, uh, oh, it's well. <laughs> Well, it's one time in Hollywood, and uh, he was Brad Pitt's character, I was Theo DiCaprio's character, and he had a, a wig on, and he looked like a fucking Ken doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, as the night went along, like, first we went out to dinner, totally made up, totally in his, in his wig, went out to dinner, it was hilarious. And then we went to a place where they, they, people know him, and they're like, oh my god, it's amazing. And then, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm in costume too. So it's also, uh, this guy, <laughs> the whole night is kind of like, you know, he came in and just looking at all Brad Pitt. I was like, yeah, and I'm, so I'm also, and you're, oh, right? What you, I mean, he tells me. Like you're, you're carrying around uh, DiCaprio's yeah, hands. Like, this is you, this is you like marker in a beard. So <laughs> like, oh my God. That's exactly it. Yeah. But yeah, but we were laughing that he would be my stunt double. <laughs> That's the idea. We actually, he had, I had seen the movie, but he hadn't, so we went and watched it that morning. So he knew the references, you know. So the movie's so fun. I still haven't seen it. Oh, so I'm dying to yeah. see it. I went to see Rambo instead, which was <laughs> classic. It's just an instant classic, to say the least. It's, you know, Sylvester Stallone's still making those things. And still that. scary and action hero y as yeah. ever. Yeah. As ever. You look at him and you're like, mm, I don't want to. <laughs> Look into his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, man. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Hi. Um, what's your favorite blooper that you've ever had in Supernatural or any other show that you've played in? Blooper. Blooper. Favorite blooper. They don't allow bloopers on Supernatural. <laughs> um, favorite blooper. I have a great new blooper, which will also segue into my pitch for my. Holiday movie, so let me start here. <laughs> so there's this, I just finished this Hallmark movie, I'll make it quick. <laughs> Yay, Hanukkah! <laughs> Hanukkah Christmas, all day long, prepare yourselves. Sufganiyo, <laughs> raise your hand if you know what that is. There we go. To the Jews in the audience, thank you. <laughs> How about a menorah? Raise your hand if you know what a menorah is. There we go, yeah. all right. Two holidays come together and make one fantastic weekend. Um, so I'm, I'm in this scene, right, and it's the final scene, right? The family finds out the thing they're not supposed to find out. We're confronted by the people. The girl's here, the boy's here, the mistletoe's here. The whole thing happens. We filmed her coverage first of all the dialogue that would lead up to a kiss. So as a professional actor and married person, you don't kiss her unless it's the shot for the kiss, you know, you just kind of go in and the camera sees her lean in, she goes out of frame, and I just kiss her on the cheek. 
she pretends that was the best mouth kiss she ever had, <laughs> then her reaction, blah, 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 blah. We do it like four or five times. She's acing it every time. Four different takes. Oh my God, the director, this guy Jeff is these amazing, amazing Canadian directors like, dude, move it on, turn it around. These are all terms we love to hear in the business. <laughs> The day is, is going as it should. It's pumped up. Her coverage is perfect. They get the master shot. We still don't kiss because they're going into the thing. Turn around on my coverage. He goes, we're about, we have about 10 minutes left on the day. We've got to get this right away. And I'm like, no sweat, man. One take back. Been doing it the whole time. 13 days in. But nailing shit. One take. I feel funny. All the things that I never feel on set. It's just flowing. I, I get into the thing. <laughs> I start the scene and I am lost in the moment. Truly, I pull a ring out of my pocket, all these things, all these beautiful romantic moments, and it goes into the kiss, right? You hold your gaze, as we do in, 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 the, in the movie industry, you gotta overplay the gaze a little bit, and she's right here, just right here, and I'm just looking at her beautiful face and thinking all these beautiful things, and I go, And as I embrace her in a hug that was supposed to be the big kiss, I go, and my mic's right here, and I go, Oh shit, I was supposed to kiss her, damn it! I don't know what happened. And Jeff Beasley from the other room, from the other side of the house, who goes, You're never gonna get that one back, mother! That was the tape. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's gonna, when he goes to edit, he's gonna use that whole tape. Up and cut to the kiss. Oh man. And if you like, go back, you won't stop thinking about that. Right. And as soon as I went in to hug her, I'm like, this doesn't feel shit. I was supposed to kiss her. It was like, God, I'm so Did you think were people laughing or no? People were laughing after the director yelled at me. But he yelled at me joking. We had like that type of romance going on. And he's like, you are never gonna get that back you him and ever. It was so funny. And I was like, oh man. It was truly like the moment was so working yeah, until uh, I uh, robbed the ball and kicked it somewhere and couldn't see it anymore. Uh, yeah. It's hard when those things like, you always, I was going to say you don't have control over it, but you had total control over it. Total control. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I just dropped the ball so bad. That's hilarious. So you watch this movie December 14th at 8 p.m. on Hallmark Channel. Sure! <laughs> and you see the mistletoe and the family and the moment, just remember, this is how the shit went down. <laughs> You'll smile as you as you watch me shove a powdery sufghani yogurt into my face. I'm like, ah, do you know sufghani is like a like a Jewish gel, jelly donut? I didn't know either. I thought I was just a, a horrible Jewish person. <laughs> I feel like you you're more Jewish. Than me. So, okay. Maybe um, not on paper, not on paper, but, paper. but outside of paper. Yeah, outside of paper, and that's what counts. Exactly. Yeah. Outside of the pit. That's where we are now. That's right. Um, I, you know, I'll tell a similar story. Uh, the kiss reminded me. I'm always awkward with uh, on-screen kissing, and um, I.